So we go into that to Luke chapter number 23, verse number 46. I'll just read one verse, but before I do, just a quick recap. Luke 23, 46 will be our verse tonight. But we've been going in the, uh, uh, for the past, uh, this will be our Sabbath Wednesday night. Uh, we started going through the statements that Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. And uh, it's been a blessing to come out of it, uh, to go through this portion of Scripture and uh, to study about what our Savior said uh, there on the cross of Calvary. Uh, and uh, the thought just comes to me that uh, a lot of times uh, what we like to hear sometimes is the last words that people say. Uh, sometimes, we, you know, somebody might pass away. What was the last word? What was the last word that come out of their mouth? We've read some of those statements from uh, great uh, people of God in their passing hours. What they say of their last words were. And, and it was always words concerning the Lord and concerning heaven. Then we've read those words about uh, those that were going the other direction, those that uh, lived their lives and sin and lived for the devil. And uh, their life's words wasn't so good. Uh, some of them, uh, I read one about uh, this guy. He was uh, talking about his feet was a burden. Pull my feet out of the fire. Pull my feet out. Uh, but I'm glad that we can read about Jesus' life's words. Mm -hmm. uh, but guess what? Then what Jesus' life's words, hallelujah. There's the life statements that he made on the cross of Calvary, uh, but praise God he rose again, hallelujah. Well, I'm glad tonight that thrills my heart. I can know that uh, we call these the life statements of Jesus that we read here in the Bible that we've studied for the past. Uh, this is going on the seventh Wednesday night, but praise God. It wasn't his life words. Hallelujah. You'll never have no really life words. Uh, one of these days, we're going to hear some of his words. Mm -hmm. He's going to say, come up hither, hallelujah. And uh, he's going to call us out to go to heaven. And, and if uh, he takes us the other way, Brother Lonnie, I believe we'll hear his voice and call us on to the other side. If we uh, want to preach the same, we'll go by the uh, clouds or go by the clouds, but we'll go. Uh, but praise God, we got Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And Jesus made seven statements from the cross. I'll recap them just right quick for us <coughs> as, uh, as we move up towards this life. The first one was uh, in Luke, chapter number 23, and verse number 34, uh, when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. He gives us the idea of a forgiveness. And we'll notice the progression, of course, as I've said, his second statement from the cross was burnt out saying to thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. It gives the idea of salvation. That old repentance thing. Hallelujah. We talked about how we could all be in the... Uh, you know, everybody in the world is in one of them things, positions. Mm -hmm. They're either on the one on the right or the one on the left. That one on the right repented. Jesus said, the day you'll be with me in paradise. Now that man on, on the left side did. <coughs> he didn't go to paradise. He went down there to hell with the rich man. That's what he meant. Apparently I say to me today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. It's forgiveness. It's salvation. The number three statement is uh, in terms of relationship to the old woman, the old my son. And uh, then he said, Behold my mother. That's in John 19 and uh, 19, 26 and 27. Then the fourth one was abandonment. Jesus' fourth statement from the cross, Matthew 27, 46, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Remember, we talked about the Bible says, Jesus said, Why has thou forsaken me? Jesus had to feel forsaken by God so that those of us that, uh, uh, that got saved would never have to feel that. Amen. God's Holy Spirit. 
But God has forsaken my God, and I don't die, and has thou forsaken me? Is still safe up from the cross? I thirst. John 19, 28. And I tell you, if Jesus Christ himself said, I thirst, he was really thirsty. I know about this law after the house. He's not a thinking over there. Jesus, he was all of the God, Son of God. He was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. Jesus was really actually thirsty. He said, I thirst. And then that sticks to the statement from the cross, gives us the idea of completion. It's what we talked about last week where it said in John 19 and verse number 30, it is finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, what Jesus finished on the cross of Calvary. Mm-hmm. Through that precious blood. <clears throat> oh, he, he sealed the devil's thing. <clears throat> Praise God. Uh, he finished the work that his father seemed to do. And uh, he finished that work <clears throat> there on the cross of Calvary. And now, the third Christ said of the statement from the cross. Chapter 2 is in Luke, chapter number 23, verse number 46. Luke 23, verse number 46. Listen to what the Bible says. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hand, I command my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his precious word tonight. Father, into thy hands, Jesus said, I commit my spirit. And that gives us the subject of reunion. Oh, there's going to be a reunion. Uh, the Father and the Son is going to be reunited once again. Uh, they, uh, Jesus left uh, the forms of glory. He stepped over that wonderful banister of heaven and come down to this sin cursed world and walked amongst a sinful and a defiled people. I walked around down here for uh, 33 somewhat years uh, on this old earth, uh, uh, separated from his home. If you've ever been separated from home, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you get a little homesick. Uh, do you think Jesus might have been a little uh, homesick for heaven? Uh, homesick to see his father? Uh, maybe homesick to see some of them angels uh, and uh, some of those streets of gold and some of that worship that's going on up there. I praise God. I'm glad that Jesus, hey, I'm glad that he come down here and done what he done. But there come a time when there's going to be a reunion. And I think about what a reunion it was when Jesus finished the work that the Father gave him to do and went back to heaven to be with the Father. Hallelujah. It gives us the idea of reunion. Uh, one of these days, we're going to have a glad reunion. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to get to see Jesus uh, that shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary. First of all, uh, uh, first of all, I want to see Jesus. Uh, uh, but then we're going to see the loved one that's gone on before us. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to go hug my mama's neck. I want to see my mama. Yeah. I want to see my grandma, my mm-hmm. grandpa. Mm-hmm. I want to see my cousins that's gone on. I've got some dear, precious loved ones and some dear friends mm-hmm. uh, that's gone on. Uh, that's outstripped us and gone on. Uh, to be with mm-hmm. the Lord. Uh, you know, they've experienced that reunion mm-hmm. tonight. Uh, when they passed away in the faith and passed away in them born again and saved by the grace of God, uh, uh, they could say, and you and I can say tonight, uh, uh, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm glad for the hope tonight uh, uh, that God gives. I'm glad tonight uh, uh, that if death uh, comes, uh, to me tonight that I can pillow my head and say, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Hallelujah. 
But his presence is felt here on this earth. From the very first inception, when the Holy Ghost uh, uh, came down and overshadowed Mary uh, and said, That holy thing that's in thy womb is the Son of God. Oh, there was a presence. Uh, his presence was felt upon this earth uh, uh, from the very first sequence. Uh, uh, can you imagine when he started walking uh, and then he started getting out? Uh, he's a walking uh, through those dusty streets of uh, Galilee and he's a heaven Joseph. Uh, and then he goes into the temple at 12 years old uh, and that uh, teaches the teachers, amen. Uh, and they were astonished that uh, this little fellow knew more about the law and the things of Moses than even they did. His presence is here on this earth. is being failed. Then he comes along, 30 year old, and starts his ministry. Starts performing in miracles. Starts healing those folks. Those with infirmities. Those with issues, those that are blind, those that are dead, those that are lame. Oh, he's a touching them. Now, he's a saving the lost. Now, he's a healing the blind. Now, he's a fixing the lame. Now, they're taking up their beds and walking. Mankind, the heart, sore in his evil way. Jesus was doing all these works, and yet they wanted to kill him. Can I tell you a whole lot ain't changed today? They, uh, there's a bunch out there, they hate God and hate Jesus so bad uh, that uh, they uh, try to do the same thing to him, Brother Paul, if we come back again. I was uh, seeing this real thing this week, some of those. Uh, this guy was talking about his dad, and his dad was a preacher. And uh, he was, uh, I think he was in uh, Louisiana, he was somewhere, he was in the city. He was on the street corner, and uh, he played his guitar and he sang, and uh, he preached. And uh, that, that little, that man, he said, that as a little boy, he said, I. I saw the pictures of my dad and he was doing that and he said there's one. He said he had stuff all over him, just all over him, just in that thing. And uh, it was spit. People was spit on him. So he was up there saying about Jesus, telling about Jesus. He said, Dad, what is that all over you? He said, well, it's not that spit. He said, people was spit on him. They said, I was down there doing what I was doing. Uh, he said, they was a, a daddy parade come by. And uh, he said, they started hollering at me. And he said, then after a while, every one of them, every one of them, he said, they walked around not some of me. And he said, every one of them fit on me. He said, Danny, what did you do? He said, I just kept on playing the thing. Kept on preaching about Jesus. You know, Jesus, they fit on him too. And uh, can I tell you tonight that it's God, God, the world will spit on you too, by God's time. Amen. But we need to be like old Apostle Paul. He, uh, he gladly suffered for Jesus Christ. He gladly took that to the Lord. But Jesus came to his presence was sailed upon this earth. Galatians 4 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that are under the law, that they might receive the adoption of sons. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm glad for that tonight. Also, Hebrews 10, right through 8. I'm going to be ready to do a bunch of scripture tonight. Hebrews 10, 5 through 8. Let me just see it right quick. Wherefore he, when he cometh into his world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings, that would have not, but a body has that prepared me. It burn offerings and sacrifices, for seeing thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said sacrifice, 
sacrifice and offerings and burn off offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not neither have a pleasure in them uh, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus did. Lord God, creating that union, his presence here on this earth. This world, this domain of darkness, joy of 33 and a half years of the blissful life of the Son of God. His presence was found in this world. And that we may be sure that His presence is still being felt now. Hallelujah. I have somebody with me to share my feelings. I feel his presence near me every day. Oh, I don't want to run my home go a day in my life. No, I'm feeling the presence of God. No troubles over day. Along this dire road, we've got some money with us. One of these days, we'll go far.
But Jesus has been gone from heaven for 33 years. You see, when he walks back in, he's in the blood. Angels. Probably kneeling down as he walks through. He's going toward the throne. God the Father stands up. And he makes the atonement for sin on the mercy seat. For us, so ever we. What a reunion. What a reunion with the Father and the Son. And that's just a foretaste of the glory divine for you and I tonight. That one of these days, hallelujah. You know, Jesus already won the victory. Folks, we're on the winning side tonight. Amen. Jesus has already defeated the devil. He's already defeated the devil. Oh, David, where's my saint? Oh, Christ, where's my ministry? One of these days, praise God, there'll be a reunion over on that way. Forgiveness is complete. Salvation is complete. Relationship between God and man is restored. The abandonment of Christ suffered on the cross is over. The thirst he suffered on the cross is over. He'll never thirst again. The completion of the work when he cried, it is finished. And now that hurt. We'll just, I'm just going to give you a couple of things, and then I'll be done. Just some thoughts the Lord give me. Jesus, he cried. Father, to thy hands I commend my spirit. Verse number 46. I just got to thinking about some things that Jesus had. And when I was thinking about that verse, number one, power. John 10, 18, therefore does my father love me because I have that because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it. Uh, again, this commandment have I received of my Father. Mm. Amen. God the Father gave you the commandment, son. Be sacrificed for sin. You're the lamb uh, that slain from the foundation of the world. John the Baptist cried, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Uh, God the Father said, Son, uh, you'll lay your life down, uh, uh, but you have the power to take it up again. Mm. Hallelujah. He's the only one that's got that power. Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory, and the presence of his person. Now listen to this. I love this part. And upholding all things by the word of his power. He upholds all things by the word of his power. All he has to do is say the word. Remember that uh, man? <coughs> his little government was sick, and he said, Well, Lord, all you got to do is say the word. Or maybe it was his servant. I don't remember that his servant was sick. Lord, just say the word. He'll be healed. When he had by himself purged our sins, what did he do? He sat down on the right hand of the majesty of our night. God was sitting up there on his throne. 33 and a half years. There wasn't nobody sitting down beside God. Amen. Ain't nobody touching that place. But then he comes back. Hallelujah. And he takes his rightful place. Set down on the right hand of the majesty on the high. So he has power. Number two, he has the promise. The promise from the Father. What strong, steadfast, faithful hands of God has. He said, Father, it's my hand. If we as Christ commend our spirit under God, our soul and spirit, our most 
knows a valuable part, the part of us that will spend eternity some way or uh, uh, we ought to put it into the hands of the Almighty God. Do you reckon tonight, when I study something like this out in preaching, I start thinking, well, I, sometimes I just get jacked down out of conviction. If I can trust the Lord to save my soul, take me to heaven, why can't I trust him sometimes with the little bitty things of life? Yeah. The little bitty old kiddly things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it gets up and you just need to start worrying about things. Well, you're in bed at night and you think, what about this? What about that? What does this have to do? What does that have to do? We're trusting with the most precious thing that we have. Our soul and our spirit. I think we will do to trust him for the other thing. Promise the promise. First Kings 856. He said, There has not failed one word of all his good promise. Woo! There's not failed one word of all his good promise. You realize one word of God that he's ever spoken has never failed? Not one word. Not one word is wrong. There is not failed one word of all his good promise. Hallelujah. Lord, his power, Lord, the promise, Lord, the place to go afterwards. John chapter number 14. Jesus said, I'm going away. Let me just turn over to us. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe God, you believe all so in me, in the Father's house, and you, man. If we're not so, I would have told you. I know to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Father, by hands I come in my spirit. And he did miss his spirit. The Bible tells us Jesus went to the heart of the earth, or was the, the, the uh, paradise. Three days later he came back, he rose from the grave on that Easter Sunday morning. Mary goes that Rabboni, Rabboni. Jesus said, don't touch me yet, Mary. I've not ascended unto my father and your father. That's what he seen, he said. I was that union with the father, that blood that he took. He come back for a few days and talked to them to Christ. But where did he go? He went to that place of heaven. That place to go afterward. That he's preparing for you and I. There's the power, there's the promise, there's the place, there's the prophecy he fulfills. I can't go through all the prophecy Jesus fulfills in the Bible. There ain't no way. I can't even go through the probably are a little bit of it. But the one that stuck out to me that, that the Lord just brought to my heart was Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? He, he fulfilled prophecy. He fulfilled it out. When we try to see who believes our report is who is the arm of the Lord revealed. Let me read this to you. John 12, 37 and 38. Now, I was asking you three, look what he said. Who is believed our report? And, uh, and to whom is the heart of the Lord revealed? John 12, 37, 38. Though he be, but though he has done so many miracles before them, yet they believe him not that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be 
24 feet, which you say, hold. Who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? The old Jews play. Isaiah, hundreds of years before, prophesied. Who's going to believe the report? Well, there it was. They didn't believe it. Romans 10, 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? There's a lot of, there's more folks nowadays that don't believe the report than they are that does. Amen. The Christian folks are minority. Lord, my Lord is mine. Uh, but thank God for them. Who believes the report? I'm glad that I believe that report. Our Genesis 3 says, well, He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He had no form or covenant when we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He's despised and rejected a man. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Matthew 27, 30 says, And they spread upon him, they spread upon him, and took the reed and smote him on the head. I'm there saying he's despised and rejected a man. Matthew said they spit off. He in the head with a red. Drove that crown of thorns on down to his brain. Despised and rejected. I mean, there ain't no beauty in crucifixion. There is no beauty that to, to behold in that as far as the physical aspect of it goes. Oh my. When he fulfilled the prophecy. Verse number four says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we didn't see him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. First Peter 2, verse 24 says, Who his own self bar our sins in his body of the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes the your is. Mm. Amen. By you strike, we're in the prophecy. It should go on and on. His power is gone to place the prophecy, his purpose. He had a purpose. I've already mentioned John 3 16. Right? God so loved the world that he gave his own of the God the Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have a life and life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That would be perfect. The Bible says that he went about doing good, healing the sick, casting out death. I cannot tell you today he's still going about doing good. Amen. I've not got anything bad to say about my Lord. He had a purpose. That purpose was that all mankind could be saved if they come to Jesus. Amen. Well, obviously, there's a provision. What is that provision that he made? It's his blood. As we stand tonight. Hebrews chapter number 4, verse 7 through 14. I'll read it here. Hebrews chapter 9. I'll read it here. Hebrews chapter number 9, verse 7 through 14. But in to the second with the high priest, all of them was here. Not without blood, which he also for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Ghost did signify 
that the way into the holiest of all was not yet manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet seen. Which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertained to the conscience. Which stood only in mates and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being coming high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, uh, not made with hands, that is to say, not just building, neither by the blood of goats and giants, but by his own blood entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an ever sprinkling the unclean sacrifice to the purifying of the flesh, which to this, there it is. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God? Purge your conscience from dead works. Father, mm -hmm. well, Jesus, thank you tonight. Lord, thank you for your word. I pray, God, now, tonight. Lord, every individual that's here, I pray that you'll minister to peace to their hearts. God, I pray tonight that, Lord, we can leave and take something with us out of your word. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for all you've done in the present service of all Sunday. Lord, we pray you'll meet with us once again. In the great and mighty way, just this. In your power and your spirit. What you do for us. We'll thank you. We'll pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You're at liberty to go. God bless you.